sorry for the technical difficulty for a moment. Good afternoon. What an amazing afternoon it has been. I'm really honored and inspired to be sharing the stage with so many passionate and really talented speakers. Let's give them a round of applause. What a day it has been. I've been to a couple TED events. I've been to some in the States and I've been to some in the UAE. And quite honestly, this has been really the most inspiring TED event I have attended. So a big round of applause to everybody involved. And what incredible topics that we've touched upon. Okay, so we have neuroplasticity and reprogramming the brain. We have our human identity. We have the power of technology, uh, the power of innovation to revolutionize the world, the payoff of passion, persistence, and other Ps. We have the wonder that erupts when art and science meet. Um, we have our role as global citizens in uh, meeting together on a digitized platform. We have the dark hour before the dawn. That's the hour when artists meet to create and get together. We have the importance of shouting loudly to be heard. We have um, the importance of asking questions and being ready to meet in the middle to have important conversations. And of course, to never stop fighting for what you love. I have something to tell you guys. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about anything different. In fact, I'm gonna talk about all of those things. Miraculously, I'm sitting in the audience like, yes, 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 all of this. And it's in the form of a spoken word poem. So we remember from Afra how we interact with spoken word poems, claps, snaps. If you like what you hear, uh, let me know. Uh, but first, a background on me. I am a actor, writer, presenter, scientist, cultural instigator, community builder, multitasker, clearly. I don't think you have to choose. You don't have to choose. That's a lie. Don't ever choose. Um, I tell stories, and more importantly, I ask questions. As an artist, I believe that the questions I pose to society may have a deeper impact than the solutions that I propose because what good is my idea if you don't see a need for it? If I haven't posed a question, revealed a door to another reality, then how could you ever walk through it to another possibility? What if? Who will we be when? How can we, why don't we who can, where do you see, will we ever, what now? Hmm. But before one looks outwards, one must look within. And the first questions I ask myself are, who am I? What do I care about? What is my signature? How do I want to leave my mark? What is the problem I was created to solve? And what is it about questions that drives us into action? What transforms a question to a quest? So one of the problems that calls to me is our human disconnection in a time where a digital web weaves bonds across the globe, uniting us in a way that humanity has never before been connected. I am obsessed with technological innovations and just as equally obsessed with the ancient tradition of oration. I believe that we all have the capacity to be storytellers, to ask universal questions. And now we have a global platform on which to share them, the internet. I also believe that to function optimally, a community needs a purpose greater than just survival. We need a spiritual fantasy. Now, fantasy is a source of encouragement for us to act in the future to achieve a desire. It also leads us to become more realistic by pointing out the contradictions between what we hope for and what actually exists in our current reality. So I created the Human Spirit Project to use performance as a means to ask, what is that shared fantasy? What connects us as one species being, and what do we believe separates us? 
Pondering these questions gave me purpose, inspired exploration within myself and of the world around me. And through the discoveries I made, I cultivated a voice. Uh, something to stand for, uh, a passion, a voice that has and will change over time, to be sure. And with that voice, I tell stories. Human stories, personal stories, cultural stories, relevant stories. But you know what my problem is? I'm cursed. I think in verse, but have to speak in a prose I never would have chosen. My language is broken, filled with TV show-isms, tele-terrorism, violence-driven, sexed-up women ever-shifting. I mean, I can't even partake in debates these days because I can't keep up with the faux news vocab that's all made up. See, our words program us. Stories like software, broadcasting terror scares. The remote's been broken for far too long, but we're too lazy to disconnect or go for a channel change. And so the news feed stays the same, filled with episodes of greed and hate. We've abolished uh, true leaders and storytellers for CEOs come heads of state. Reality served cold through a little black box, and till now, even I've been quite content to sit in my socks and flip through the tube. Netflix and chills running down my spine. Big brother, can these moving pixels be real? And it seems we um, relate to phones more than we do our own these days, don't we? Swipe right if you like the sight of it. Swipe left to make it disappear. Curate your worldview. Drown out what you don't want to hear. Now, tell me, why does everyone crave and rave about the newest gadgets and then downloads the latest OS? I mean, as a global community, we accept that emergent technology is, by default, the best. Developed and tested innovations make the old obsolete. When was the last time you touched a floppy disk or CD? We invest in new technology, the evolutionary daughter of all chemical incantations. We cast programs and create new ways of relating and communicating across space, and the promise of progress is daily. So, does it make sense that the majority of the human population is still using an old Macintosh way of thinking? What I mean is our human operating systems, our governments and religions, cultures and traditions are ancient automations. Outdated, they were made to suit the needs of the people in the era they were created. Yet we believe that these forms were delivered to us complete. And that in itself is a limiting belief. Tech, our greatest tool, has helped us evolve, and we use the latest innovations to help us solve for time. They open, up, they open us up to a whole new dimension of ease and efficiency, discovery unconfined. The problem is we don't understand new potential human applications. We're flooded with so much information biased and branded, conflicting opinions and too many risks. What if I invest in this new modern lifestyle and don't like it, and so the old path persists? Only in technology do we overcome this stasis. Gadgets are upgraded, but society stays the same? It seems we're somewhat resolved to maintain the status quo. And as far as that mental metaphor goes, the majority of people haven't discovered the internet yet. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, the majority of the human population does not have access to an internet connection. No access to empowering information or the rest of the human population. So no vision of what could be. No space to dream into. No tools, no common vocabulary. And thus, are they truly free to participate in any form of global democracy? 
It is my humble opinion that the human computer needs to be recoded, updated. We've got to write new stories, script our future, then make it. Where are we going? Who will do what best? We can roadmap the glorious future that is ahead. I mean, it just makes sense. And I, for one, am ready to upgrade to a new social operating system. Are you? Yes. yes. Let's hack the network, plug into our human worth. Oh, but the problem is that curse. What if we want to think in verse, but the status quo chose prose because it chose first? Do we hold our poetic fullness back, fit into their pre-packaged box and sit tight, waste a life, dull a light? I'm not saying fight because that's still participation in war. No, I want more. But I think we may need a score, a choreography. And to write in this language of movement, we need a new tool to do it. A vocabulary of freedom, of unity, to reframe reality, rewrite the rules with free thought. Can we use the technology of language and gadgetry to entertain a middle ground, educate each other and ourselves, then design the future that we want to build? I think we can. So, this is an invitation. You are all welcome to this club. Our mission is peace and our one rule is love. Our task, to create a dictionary, a mental rocket ship, and the whole human race can contribute to it and fill our space with words and concepts that we want to teach our children. And maybe when we collectively write things down, we're noti we'll notice what's common, important, and we can imagine a world with those values in motion. And little by little, the stories that we tell ourselves will start to change and one day we'll realize that we are not the same. We may have even grown into a universal brain, a web that connects us all worldwide, all on the same page, all online, in an automated agora, a digital global town center. We'll crowdsource clarification and understand each other better. In the past five years, Humanity has been occupied with spring and revolution. But what have we gained in that lost time? Can you actually name it? Global restlessness. Across the world, we felt the desire to move to new tunes, but we're stuck dancing old patterns in a rut because we haven't yet found new grooves. We're too habituated to old rules. We're limited by the vague language we use. On December 10, 1948, the Geneva Convention created the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But have those proclamations really bettered the global quality of life? And if not, why? Who is responsible for enforcing and applying these ethics? Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the right to equality, but what does that mean? Equality between sex, gender, opposing political parties? How do we fairly balance the difference between you and me? What is equal? A world where everyone gets the same thing or everyone gets just what they need? Article 2 is freedom from discrimination. But how is that practiced in a world of distinction and choice? In some, in some cases, we discriminate just by voicing our preference. So how can we combine discrimination with deference? Article 3 is the right to life, liberty, and personal security. But what qualifies a life of liberty? Is security just cyber and physical safety? Or is it a strong foundation in Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Article 4 sees all persons liberated from servitude and slavery, but what does it mean to be free? What exactly is slavery? Do debt and interest qualify? 
The Declaration goes on to outline 30 noble ideals, but what do those ethics really mean? And what demands do they make of me? Have we ever really asked? Almost 70 years later, we don't need another convention where privileged diplomats meet and agree on our behalves because thanks to technology, we now ourselves have the means to explore those answers collectively. We can convene directly if that is our intention and find a common ground ourselves. And perhaps we'll notice similarities start to outweigh the cultural differences we once felt. 7 billion people, 500,000 animal species, 300,000 plant species, 6,909 languages, 4,300 religions, 196 countries. Zoom out, please. One planet, here, now, and infinite possibilities. The definitions that will pour in from all corners of the globe will be fluid, convergent, holistic, and personal because knowledge is multifold. It is narrative and numerical. It is current and historical. It is context in place and time, the why. It is also skill-based and can be applied to better our quality of life. Then we collate all these contributions and clarify. Turns out the revolution will be crowdsourced and streamed live. So this online collection of definitions will be the start, the how. We need you to be the who and now. Help create this global manifesto and together we can clean up this global mess. We are so in time to engineer the future and help unite our human drive. So take this on as an ice bucket challenge that frees the mind. Friends, fellow creatives, visionaries, idols, family, people who care about working towards new beginnings. Spill your heart on your sleeve. Dump out your bucket of dreams because we are the keepers of infinite realities, manifesting a global destiny using technology and transparency. So wake up. Show me what you're made of. This reflection and expression on our beautiful condition is the only quality that separates us from other conscious matter. And it is your duty to share and make your time here matter. So tell us through your anger. Tell us through your wit. Tell us through your intelligence. Tell us in anecdote or song. Tell us in rhyme. Tell us in real time, raw and plain. I want to know what makes you feel ashamed and how I can stop it. What makes you feel loved and how I can augment it. What gives you hope, a memory of the future, and how we can cope until that dream is made material. This is nothing more than just a little NLP, because language is patterned by what we believe. Language puts limits on what we perceive. And now our goal is to put everyone on the same pages of this dictionary. Because if we've agreed on similar ideologies, there can be no other or stranger, just brother. If it was language that cursed it, then language can reverse it. So. Let's work it. Um, email your definitions. This is for real. Uh, if you want to email your definitions to the human spirit project at gmail.com, I'm going to build a website and build this dictionary. Let's script our future. Thank you so much, TEDx, Cambridge High School. Thank you to all the speakers. To Pragya, very well done. Thank you so much.